Girl, Everybody it's packed out here tonight. Follow mm -hmm. the one line, please. I told you. IDs out. I need to see IDs. Thank you, ladies. Welcome to Punk Ave. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Can you move? What? Excuse me. Uh-uh. Oh my God. We, you ready to go? Girl, I've been ready. Well, hey, girl. Not 60, 30, 40. Not 70, 30. What's that? But a 50, I don't know. I just have it in my head. That's a song? It is. What? Who's singing that? There's no Are you singing it wrong? Loving somebody when you love somebody, somebody else. I don't know what you were singing. I know that song. He says, it's not 60, 40. Not 70, 30. Oh, I don't, I don't. But a 50, 50 love. I, I do know that part, though. Because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you've been you've been at all old school clubs. I've been with old school. Yeah, that's oh, that's old, old school. school song. Look, you don't even call them old school. You just call them schools. That that oh okay. Yeah, that's what I call them schools. I've been around a lot of schools these past couple months, and um, it feels so, so good. good. I do know that song. Yeah. Loving <laughs> somebody when somebody, somebody loves you first. <laughs> That's back. the fact. Back. It's back? Oh, back. Okay. Somebody loves you back. We're back. And we're back. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. How uh, you been? I say you like two weeks. How's your life? Um, this job is... I say this every time. My job is just consuming. Well, be blessed. You got a job. It was a time. Not, you know what? I'm not. I'm not. But, you know, and I hate when... I really hate when people say, oh, well, you know, you can't complain because at least you're Oh, no, you can't it. complain. But it's just like, no, I can't complain because it's hard. And I want to complain because this shit's not fucking easy. And people get on my fucking nerves and I need to vent. And it's not that I'm ungrateful for my job because I love my, I mean, I love being able to provide for myself. But god damn, my job is annoying. It's it's hard. It's like it's really hard. It's really really hard dealing with with. Mo I feel like I'm a parent to about thirty people, and half half of these people are older than me, mm -hmm. and it's just like coaching them and it's just it, it's just a lot and sometimes I just feel like I just can't fucking do it cause this it's too much but you know it pays the bills so I keep going so working on it but it pays the bills that's exactly yes, what it is. Yeah. yeah. What you gonna do when they come for you? I thought about that song the other day because I had posted like all these like random couples on the IG stories. And I've totally forgot about um next that like Badu, Erica Badu and Andre 3000's era. Aww. And it reminded me of that song and I played her first album actually, cause Apple Tree and Pick Your Afro Daddy. I revisited her first album. It's, it was a good time that day. Because it's Delicious. flat on one side. That was a good time. <laughs> her first album was a good time. I remember my mama played the hell out of her first album. You know, I played the hell out of Mama's Gun. That. No, 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 yeah, no, I mean, that was. Which, which number that was, was that? Uh, I think number three. Uh, that was two. Because I didn't do Mama's Gun. I think I did. 2001, 2002. It might perhaps. be um, no, America. It was, my freshman year. it was my freshman year of high school. I think I might have did America. I can't remember which album had um, I'm a recovering undercover over lover. I said, kill that song because I was a recovering undercover over lover. So the 110th hour. But I think that might have been America. I can't remember. It was a lot of them Erica Badu songs I found like randomly versus yeah. album like. Like I had, I knew Badu was them because my mom had it. And then she had like the live version. I think that might have had Tyrone on it. Mm -hmm. And then by that time, I think I was 
like out of her house. So a lot of Erica Badu songs I might have had I heard on Pandora or whatever whatever I was listening to at the time, but not like album album. So I can't remember which songs was Mama's which. Mama's Gun was. I Wait, and I think I might like the song on Mama's Gun that had the video where um, she was in a record store and then she was like different faces on the record. What That's was like the one with Carmen? What song was that? Uh, love of my life. She did the different faces on that one. I think so. No, I did love love of my life um, though. Because I don't I don't remember. Uh, I think it was that one. Because I don't remember. I can't. I, I do remember. No, she what, didn't do. She life? didn't do a video on uh, Mama's Gun. Let me see what's um, on Mama's Gun. Mama's Gun. I listened to like on repeat. I had the CD. I listened to that from the beginning to the end. And I remember thinking, I was like, "Wow, she really sampled Nate Dogg's." Um, Oh shit, bag lady. Yeah, she sampled you uh, hurt Nate Dogg's. You gon' bag. Dre- huh? She sampled Nate Dogg's. Uh, one of Nate Dogg's songs. I did like Bag Lady. Ooh, ooh. But that was an awesome album, and that's the only one that I really, really, really ooh. listened to because I was ooh. like into her, but and I understood what she was going through, and then like. I just kind of lost interest after after that, but uh, Mama's Gun was probably one of my favorite Erica Badu. I've always dipped and dabbled in Erica, but I just I genuinely remember about it was because my mom had that CD and she played the hell out of it, and I remember how the cover looked. Yeah, and yeah, and then I did like that one song I think she had with the Roots, but I, I might have been on the Roots album. And it wasn't if until, you don't worry about I, and it wasn't until I, I saw her fucking I live. Feel, uh, um, I was really excited to see, to see her like up close and because everybody always used to tell me that I looked like her and I never I never thought that I looked like her so when I finally met her I, grew, I, I can't see it but go ahead I, when I met her it's because of our eyes we both have light eyes and so when I met her I was like Erica they said that I look like you <laughs> people have light eyes and she was just like Okay, <laughs> but I was just like, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to take a picture. I just wanted to tell you that, like, you know, this is just one of those things or whatever. And she was just like, okay, girl. All right. I like Erica. My fr- but my friends would go see Erica, and I guess that's what Erica was like, low down, did you, whatever her, her DJ name is. So they went to see like an Erica show and Erica wanted to DJ, but apparently, like, her DJ equipment wouldn't work that night. So, she was like, oh, man, my my DJ stuff won't work, so I'm going to have to sing. And my friend was like, bitch, that's what we came for. (laughs) So, she ended up performing or whatever, and they had a great time. And then I read Common's book, um, his first book. I think it was called Common Sense, if I'm not mistaken. And, um... Because I was just interested to know, because everybody said when you date Erica, you go crazy. So it was just real interesting to hear, like, Common's perspective of their relationship. And the fact that Erica was just like, all right, well, I'm not in love with you no more, so I'm good. I love her. And I was just like, wow. She's super, like, she's a super fucking vegan. I remember we did a show in Memphis, Tennessee, and her writer was like, Everything was vegan. When it, when it when I say a writer, that means like an artist um, list of things that Demands they want. they want yeah. in their like dressing room. So I was going off this writer. I'm like, yo, like uh, this where I'm at. They only had like a fucking some a grocery store equivalent to Kroger's and a Walmart. So there's nothing like super fucking vegan. So she wanted like like all vegan maple syrup and. Uh, special honey. It, it we need. She needed an electric teapot. It was just like a lot of stuff, and I was just like, "Oh shit! I don't even think that I, I'm able to get this because I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can get all this here in Memphis, Tennessee." <laughs> but I ended up getting it, and everything was cool. And then like her manager was hella cool, and when I met her, she had like these long braids, and she was wearing this like crazy outfit, and. I was just like, yo, they always say I look like you. And I kind of feel like I look like you or whatever. And she was just like, all right, girl. Like, Erica. <laughs> but 
But then I was like, man, I'm being a groupie. Let me go the fuck home. If you don't worry about that. But she killed the show, I though. She did I amazing. Saw, uh, Her band. Like, we'll Erica is such a great homie. performer. Performer. Don't worry, performer. you got me. All right. That was, I did, I did genuinely. She's a great By the way, I visited, visited you this week, and it reminds me, my mother killed that shit. Oh, Erica. Amen. What's cool in the city? So, I have been on a plant-based diet kick. So, I've been watching a lot of documentaries about food, the food industry. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been disgusted. Yeah, I skipped past them so I could still properly eat meat. But go ahead. I mean, it's not necessarily about eating meat. It's just the the quality of your meat and you know just getting the the four dollar bin meat is just not what's up um and then of course i've been watching my 600 pound life and I, I, that's I, I, y'all let me tell you something <laughs> i know i think i did I talk about this on this show or was it on Facebook? doctor now is fucking hilarious i, I don't know which which i really want to go to to his to his it's doctor, here doctor. it's here in Houston. Yeah, okay. And I'm so really let me trying, tell and I think it's close to my house. And I'm because I've seen them ride the Beltway because I'll be looking at as they travel. <laughs> this is the thing about that show, right? I be watching it, and I just be really confused on how y'all let somebody who can't move bully y'all. Like that one time, and I, I can't remember who it was, but it was like a lady in the bed. And she was mad because y'all they wouldn't get her no fried chicken. And she fried the chicken on the side of her bed. I never forgot that. She did fry that chicken. And if the thing was, they had to bring the table and the grease. And, and the pot. And the pot. And the portable pot. And the chicken. And she seasoned it. So y'all had to bring her seasoning and flour to fry the chicken. I just could never imagine me being that I'm such just, a weak I mean, link to do that shit. I just be like, nah, bitch. They'll figure it out. I'm about to go. I mean, I don't know. But it's just... Doctor now, I guess maybe perhaps maybe it's later in the season. So now he knows he's a personality, a TV personality, and perhaps he's just like doing it. No, nah, he TV. was like that. I watched that shit first season. When, he was like that. When he he's telling people No, you eat too much. Where are you going? No, you're eating too much. And I really honestly like honestly I've just been looking at what I eat, how I eat, how often I eat, and, you know, and then I've been watching these documentaries about the food industry. It's disgusting. Granted, everything we have, like, as far as, like, uh, America's food stuff is tainted to me, but the, the disparity of the, the lack of knowledge of fruits and like how we are um, trained on like fruits and vegetables heal the body. And it's true. If we go on a straight fruits and veggie diet, we can heal our bodies. And nobody's talking about that. Nobody's promoting that. None of these big companies are promoting that. Um, you know, when we look at our school system, we look at food that are that are placed in our schools, uh, elementary, high school, whatever. It's all big companies, and it's all to keep people unhealthy. And um, I don't know. I just got really disturbed by that, and so I was just like, you know what? I can't even eat processed food, even though I just ate a bag of Cheetos. Uh, my stomach is churning right now like my stomach really hurts right now um i think this because i just walked into the store and i was just like oh i need something to eat because i haven't had anything to eat today uh because i've been fasting but yeah like eating healthy and clean has been one of my top priorities within the last couple weeks like i feel like i've been gaining weight i have like a little stomach even though I'm skinny, I still feel a pudge. 
and um, I feel like like What's the word? Not lethargic. Heavy, heavy. Heavy. I feel heavy. You got so heavy, heavy baby. baby. Feel, yeah, yeah. I feel heavy. I feel I feel like, and then I'm breaking out in hives. Like, it's just a lot of stuff that's going on. I'm just like, what the fuck? Listen, I just came off a of fast. And y'all, let me tell y'all how difficult it is. So I, I didn't eat. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to implement that. I didn't eat. In, I ate between 12 and 8 p.m., and then I was a pescatarian, but the problem is I got tired of eating fish anyway. So then I just ended up being a vegetarian like the last four days. So I really was eating for nutrients at that point. I was eating just to eat at that point. Because it was nothing for me to like cook a pot of okra and just eat okra for breakfast, well, lunch and dinner. So well, um, okra's good for you. Okra is actually Dr. Dr. But, CB. But honestly, Dr. okra is one of my is uh he said that's one of the best uh, okra has been one of my favorite vegetables anyway over everything so um it was it was easy for me to eat okra but then you get everything just gets so played out so quickly i really feel like people who are like pescatarians and vegetarians and all the people who just eat specific food y'all need a y'all need a chef because my mind's just not that creative so i i okay so um one of the girls that works at my restaurant, she uh, went and she is like a super vegan. And this is one of the people that inspired me to really go vegan and for like a couple weeks. And um, I tried the recipe that the chef made at home and it worked. And basically it's just onions, bell peppers. Red bell peppers are have more vitamin C than oranges. Uh, green onions. I use shallots. I love onions. And uh, so I use pretty much all onions in one dish with like brown rice and uh, tomato, like organic tomato sauce and chickpeas, which is just hummus in its actual form. And uh, put that all together. And it's just del- this delicious dish. And I've been eating off that for the past couple of days, except for today, because I really, I went off the rocker today. But um, eating healthy, and I I did notice a change. I noticed a change in my skin. I noticed a change, uh, maybe perhaps this is probably why I've been breaking out in hives, is because my body is changing. Um, I don't know, but not eating a lot of processed foods has really helped me sleep better. Uh, taking in more water. I normally just drink, uh, lately, it's been uh, water and wine. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Wine. Always wine. wine. That's uh, what you, that's actually your words. Of course. Always no, wine. Wa- always wine. Uh, but wine, when I'm home in the evening, uh, water during the day, but tonight, of course, I'm drinking a Corona and having hot Cheetos. So today is like a cheat day for me. But um, but yeah, like process just watching a whole shitload of fucking documentaries about food and the food industry and how things are processed and how foods are processed and how things are targeted and how they're so unhealthy for our bodies is just really made, especially because I'm getting older and I feel things like, you know, I have muscle spasms. My ankle hurts. My knees hurt. Oh, you all ho. Um, there are certain. I mean, there's things that hurt, and it's just like, damn. How do I counter out? How do I counteract that? And the best way to counteract that is with the food. Excuse and working me. out really works too. And not yes, not even full hiking. working out, like at least like walking out and stuff, like and like I've walking been, out in your neighborhood for like thirty minutes or something. Yeah, and I've been hiking. So there's this also there's this trail off of Memorial. Um, they have like five trails in one, and it's super cool. Like if I ever have a child, I would take my kid to this. Like they teach kids about. Uh, plants and uh insects and just like outside stuff 
And I just think it's so cool. I can't think of the name. It's like an Arbitrarium Houston, something like that. But um, they have like five hiking trails within one uh, community. And um, I mean, it's like full butterfly. It's If you like being outside with the elements, and when I say elements, like butterflies and dragonflies and flies and shit like that, you would like it. Um, I love going there. I love being outside. And I, I was going there before, um, like a couple years ago, but then I saw a snake, a big ass snake, and I stopped going. Um, but now I've been back and it's just, it's just so gorgeous. They redid the whole trails. Um, but yeah, like I've just been hiking and trying to, trying to at least eat healthy during the day and minimize my processed food intake. So that's what's cool in the city. Just watching your processed food intake and, uh, just, I don't know, being mindful of what the fuck you eat. Because eating out, my little brother eats out fucking every day. And I, it just makes my stomach hurt. Every time I see him come in with a Taco Bell bag, a, a Wingstop bag, a McDonald's oh, bag. He's 22. Oh, that sounds about right. It's disgusting. Ugh. I, just, I mean, like, I, it's just, it's it was just an era. A y'all Domino's. T- y'all could not tell me nothing about a good gordita. Actually, I used to like gorditas from Taco Bell. They had like a, a set. I, can't, I haven't been to Taco Bell in so long, but it was like gorditas and you get like a sauce taco. The thing about McDonald's I liked, I used to get like a McDouble and some oh, french no. fries and a a, man, a pineapple mango. Um, what I used to get from Wendy's, they used Wendy's, to do like... Wendy's, little brother loves Wendy's, Popeye's. They, they used to do... Um, I don't, was it a four for four then? It might have been a four for four then. But yeah, it was a dollar menu back then because they changed it. Okay, either way, if it was four for four or a dollar, I used to get their burger. They had some chili I liked. Uh, their chili, you know, their chili used to hit really the good. Chi- the chili was hot. Uh, the chili, chili hit, and then they had like this chili sauce that I used to fuck with heavy. Listen, in short, I have made my rounds on all of like the fast food places, but. A young girls game when you get older and your palate gets a little different and you know you got a, a better coin th- those yeah. places won't do it for you and then those places won't do it for you even when you are broke broke like even if i'm broke broke, broke yeah i will still True. go to the grocery store and, and cook get, a meal yeah, yeah. and get it's, like chicken or or salmon or vegetables yeah. and cook a, a meal versus taking that five dollars to go eat at somebody's dollar menu because it's just it, it gets extra. You can. You, you, it gets disgusting. You can taste the. the yeah, it just honestly just gets disgusting. You can taste the shit. Point. You can taste the shit. And, and it might not be for everybody, but for like me and my friends, it just it, it got to a point where it was just like this is gross. The only thing I go to, well, I will go to McDonald's. I still if I, if mm-hmm. the fries if I'm at, if uh, somebody going and they going to get some fries, I'll still eat McDonald's fries. And but I haven't had their fries in a long time. And I do still like they pineapple mango smoothie, but that's not a, that's not enough for me to like go I, to McDonald's. I for. haven't had McDonald's since two thousand and six. I can't remember the last time I ate McDonald's, but I haven't had fast food. If fries have been in, if if, if some McDonald's fries are sitting right here right now, I still eat them. Nah, I wouldn't eat them. Oh, eat me some McDonald's fries in a minute. No, that's all just grease. That's grease and fries. I don't know. But needless to say, uh, I think that that's what's cool in the city is just watching your intake on um, uh, foods that are not fruits and vegetables. Because at the end of the day, this this it's such a it's crazy how we are just consumed by this diet of fake food. There's so much fake food in the marketplace, and we're consuming that's that. That's why these chicken wings, that's why these chicken and legs I look eat, like turkey like legs. Chicken, chicken wings. My little brother brought home a package of chicken legs that look like turkey legs. And I'm like, dog, that's disgusting. Like, that's not even, like, like you paid $3 for these turkey, <laughs> turkey legs. It's 10 of them. It's disgusting. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, you guys, eat healthy. At least incorporate uh, vegetables in your diet. 
sweet potatoes, spinach, kale, red peppers, like I said, high concentration of vitamin C versus uh, oranges, pears. Look at Dr. Dr. Sibby. Um, I've been trying to follow his diet routine, but that's been hard because I love a lot of shit. And, um, but for the most part, I've been really good at not eating processed food. Processed food is the worst. Cookies, candy, sugary drinks, cokes, sodas. I don't. I haven't had a soda in like two weeks. Um. But anyways, so that's what's cool in the city. Well, so this week, Women Crush Wednesday goes to. Um, well, usually it's a a person from like a a eighties, nineties, seventies sitcom or movie, but this week. Women Crush Women's that goes to the word and the people that are referred to as aunties. So here's the thing. I'm somebody's auntie now. My niece is turning three this year, I believe. Don't quote me, but I really feel like it's three. Um, yeah, she turns three this year. And um, somebody had told me and like one of the recovering party girls comments that me and Adriana was like aunties to her and I went to her page and you know she was grown and not that I can't be a grown person's aunties because auntie really has no age limit aunties kind of depends on when your parents had kids and when your siblings had kids and you have no control if you are auntie at you know Zero, two, five, seven, thirteen, fourteen, twenty-one, thirty, thirty-five. I became an auntie at thirty, right? When she said she was our auntie, the thing about auntie is, for me, when I say the word auntie, I kind of think like grown woman, responsible woman, a person who kind of got her shit together. That's like my kind of vision of auntie. I don't want to be nobody auntie because. I feel like I'm still a cousin who still can make mistakes. And even though I'm my niece's auntie, she too young to even know what the fuck I be doing. So I still got some time before she's like fully like aware of me and herself. <laughs> right now, I'm still like, God, God, goo, goo. That's Auntie Ebony. Or I don't think she can't even say Auntie Ebony. She say Auntie and then she calls me like Auntie something else. Like Auntie Ed or an E. She can't even fully get the whole thing together. So, um... The reason I chose auntie was because uh, Ava, the last time we taped, had said that she doesn't like the word auntie because of Aunt Jemima and, I don't know, somehow slavery and, you know, segregation became a part of her, like, reason why she doesn't like auntie. Okay, whatever. And then this week, Oprah and Gail did an interview for Oprah Magazine and was like, they also don't like the word because it ages them and no one's calling Beyonce auntie and you know apparently auntie means old as fuck once again my aunties became aunties originally at like 13 and 14 or like 12 and 13 because my mom had kids young and then my aunties became my aunties they were like 15 and 16 I became an auntie at 30 I'm not against the word auntie. I don't think it's a derogatory term. Like your good sisters, Oprah and Gail trying to tell y'all. I just, and I don't like the fact too. Did you read the article? No. So Oprah also said that she doesn't mind when people from Africa call her auntie or sister based on the age difference because it's a part of their culture. But apparently here it's not a part of our culture. So whatever. And this is the thing. I hope y'all not going up to these people anyway and call them auntie and uncle because I'm a person who online all day say people we all family and I call everybody a cousin or whatever. Mm. But I do that shit like kind of funny online. If I ever walked into like Michelle Obama, Oprah, Janet, um, Angela Bassett, Jennifer Lewis, I would never say auntie or cousin or sister. I don't know them motherfuckers. I know them like from their movies and their interviews, but I don't know them niggas enough to like want to I don't know them niggas, so I don't never want them niggas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them anything outside of this mm -hmm. or their first name. Either you get Angela, or you gonna get Miss Angela. Either you're gonna be Jennifer, or you're gonna be Miss Jennifer. I'm not gonna like go out of my way to call y'all like a part of my family. So I hope y'all aren't going to these people and and saying those type of things to them. 
But with that being said, they probably are. Even if I don't, I don't know. But with that being said, let's be clear: Oprah, Gail, and Ava. I never heard nobody call Gail Auntie Gail to begin with. So I was really confused on who the fuck was doing that. And I kind of feel like we just met Ava. Even though I do like Ava's work. Eh. I don't know you long enough to call you auntie. Even in the auntie industry. And the thing about Oprah and Gail too. They made like it, they made it an age thing. I would have been okay with everything. But they made it very much an age thing. Like well I think you should call people auntie at 85. And no one calls Beyonce 18. Nobody calls Beyonce auntie or whatever. And my thing was. I found it hilarious that y'all went out of y'all way to kind of like point out the fact that y'all really think Gil and, and Oprah are your grandma's ages and not your auntie ages. Because in my mind, when I read the article, the whole time I was thinking, when I grew up in the 90s, who was Oprah at your house? Everybody. Your mama and everybody? Yeah. Okay, so in my house, my mama watched Ricky Lake. Well, my mom was like, at work but when my mama did stay home my mom would have chose Ricky Lake over Oprah my aunties are younger than my mama so of course they watched Ricky Lake I associate Oprah kind of with my grandma because General Hospital and it, my grandma lived in New Summer on the beach Florida so when I stayed with my grandma uh, from 3 to 4 it was General Hospital from 4 to 5 was the Oprah Winfrey show from 5 to 6 was the local news from 6 to 7 was ABC News, which would do, like, all of the global news. 7 to 7.30 was Je- uh, Jeopardy. 7.30 to 8 was um, Wheel of Fortune. And then 8 o'clock was, like, when primetime TV happened. So, I never kind of, like, associated Oprah with Auntie in that because my grandma was the person who watched Oprah so I found it hilarious and very rude that y'all went into that comment section that comment section and reminded Oprah that she's actually not quote unquote whatever y'all consider auntie age that she's actually grandma age because I totally forgot that Oprah was pushing 70 until y'all reminded me that Oprah was pushing 70 which makes Oprah closer to my grandma age than she was my auntie in the first place so in short women crush women that goes to aunties if you somebody's auntie Hey, y'all. Hey, girl. Hey. If you're not somebody's auntie and you being an auntie in somebody's life, that's great. If you want to be an auntie, that's cool. I don't think auntie is as derogatory as it it was it seemed in the discussion that I've seen online. However, I do think call people what they want to be called. If they, want, if they don't want to be called auntie, call them by their first name. If they don't want to be called auntie and then they say be called queen, just call them by their first name. I just, you know, call people what they want to be called. Even though I think it's really weird that everybody think auntie's such an old name. What did, what did that what did that happen at? Um, I, don't, I don't think auntie's old. It's not. I, mean, I thought auntie was like the cool person that's not your mom. I, I mean, I'm an auntie. I'm an auntie to a lot of kids. My best friends have children, and I'm their auntie. But it's I, I feel like I'm the cool person. Like, I'm not their Do you mother. take it as, like... They How do you take the word on but, but they don't even look at like they just they don't even they they call me by my name so they don't even say it. But auntie. I do make kids do that. You know I have no, friends. I have they friends. Don't even, they don't even say they don't even say auntie. They Did just you say tell them name. that? No. They, well, I, have, I, I, I say tell say my name like you know especially the ones that are young and they're little. Um, they call me by my, like my my family name, um, but. For the most part, most people just call me by my family name. Like my my friends' kids, they all just call me by, and that's and that's okay with me because I don't. I mean, I don't care about that. But. Yeah, I just I never thought. But then I never thought auntie was like a term until I, I read I, when I was reading the article. I seen Angela Rice say something like she told people to call her cousin because people were trying to call her auntie, and she was just like. You 35. And that's the thing, too. I think you need to be mindful of who you call in. Like, if that's what you're going to do, be mindful. Because I remember the girl who was like, you and Adriana are just like my aunties. And she was like 28. And it's like... But at the end of the day, I personally don't care. Because I, I, I don't care. Um, you can call me what you want. But the reality is, is that um, people, what you... 
allow yourself to be addressed as that's what that's what it is but honestly everything else is like okay so i'm your auntie if you feel like if you some, feel like some listen. My, no some of my servers think that i'm their mother or their auntie or whatever that's fine whatever whatever the fuck makes you feel better in life that's mm-hmm. great but at the end of the day not your auntie <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll Listen, because I'm thinking too. That was the thing about this whole yeah, like the shit out of you. No, but that was the thing I felt <laughs> kind of <laughs> when, when I what, they they kept the article on Oprah Magazine, but they actually deleted the post on Oprah Magazine's Instagram because a lot of people kind of went in and was like, first of all, we never called Gail Auntie, and second of all, y'all all the sale, y'all grow my age. Which was hilarious to me personally because it was like, damn, imagine like saying you don't like to be called auntie because of ageism for people to tell you like, we're doing you a favor because low key. No, but, I just don't think that people should care. I don't I don't think people should care. At the end of the day, like... Call people what they want to be called. You know, but you, auntie, this, I just... The, 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 auntie, the weaponizing... Auntie, the weaponizing of auntie really kind of... I kind of was like, wait. I, maybe it's just because I'm young in spirit. Perhaps, maybe. But you know who did that? You know, Jackie Hair, Jack, Jack A, Harry. Mm -hmm. She was just like, I don't give a shit. Call me, I see. You can't, can't make me older, and you can't turn down my sex. You can't, yes. Like, like I, that's how, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah, I just. You can call me auntie all day. I wanted Um, to always be a cool aunt. So as long as you in a reference that you you chilling and just respect me. The the aunt Jemima. Don't don't disrespect me. The aunt Jemima threw me off too. It's just like, damn, I gotta go go read my history books about how racist (laughs) Aunt Jemima is. Honestly. Just don't disrespect me. I can be I can be your auntie, but honestly, I'm my spirit, my my internal being is 18 years old. Um I don't feel like I'm 35. I don't really give a fuck if you think that I'm your aunt or not. That's cool. Whatever the fuck you feel, whatever makes you happy, that's cool. But yeah, and um, then honestly, just, I don't know if y'all was running up to Oprah and Gail and them. And saying auntie, but stop calling people auntie and cousin who you don't know in real life. As much as I be online playing, if I ever met a Jackson, I would never say auntie, uncle, sister, cousin, brother to no person. I would be like, oh, legend Toya. Oh, Jackie. Oh, Janet. Oh, Tony Braxton. Oh, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be like, hey, cut. I just think that it's Y'all just, are weird. It just, Don't be weird. I mean, it just, again. Don't be weird. I think uh, with certain celebrity, it comes with that territory. Because you know them forever, but I think people should also have a conscience of. But people don't. don't but focus. people don't. But people don't. People really, don't. really, oh. truly, honestly don't. You people don't. really don't have boundaries. People don't know. Um, common sense. Well, the people who listen to this show, if you don't have boundaries or fucking common sense, I'm telling you, if you never met these niggas and you don't know these niggas and you're just a fan of their work, call these niggas by their first name and add Mr. or Mrs. if you want to. It's 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 really that ain't your mama, sis. I ain't tripping. Call me auntie, but just somebody will walk up to you like mom. Like, You'll I'll, be like, hey, I'll pop you. If I find mom, then I, that means that I can pop you. Mm-mm. If you get out of hand and you get disrespectful, I can fucking pop you. Ebony works fine. I, I, I do get people who say Natoya Ebony or Natoya. If you see me out and you say Natoya, I probably won't answer to you because in real life, no one called, like my real friends and family don't call me Natoya. So you're better off calling me Ebony if you want an immediate response. If you say Natoya, I'm the type of person because it's happened before, I will hear it. But it takes like a second to register that you're talking to me in a weird way. Because in everyone, my first name is actually Ebony. And then Natoya is my middle name. So you'll get a quicker response with Ebony. You'll get a semi-quick response with Natoya Ebony. And it'll still take me a minute to register that you're talking to me if you say Natoya. Even if you say Adriana, I'm, that's my name. Adriana. A-D. A. I'm gonna ignore the fuck out of you. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. Well, I don't know. But Whatever. bless. Don't call. But don't be calling these people auntie and uncle. But I'm I, I thoroughly entertained at the simple fact that y'all 
reminded Oprah that y'all were calling her auntie to be nice because she was actually grandma age, which Oprah is closer to my grandmother's age than she is my aunts and mother, FYI. And then I'm pretty sure you didn't. You watched Braxton Family Values, the, the finale. I watched the, um, not the finale. Because they asked us about it. No, I watched the, I didn't watch the finale, but I watched uh, the episode of Tamar's birthday. And uh, that was the finale. That was the finale? When, she, when Trina got proposed to? Yes. That, that was, was the finale? That was the, the season finale, yeah. Oh. Uh, I, I was thoroughly disappointed by it because it's just like, at what point do we say we got to grow up? At what point do we say um, it's not about you? Like, at the end of the day, you're, it's not your 21st birthday. It's not your 18th birthday. It's not your 16th birthday. It's not your 40th, 25th, 50th, it's not your, it's 60th. Not your, it's not your, it's not your 25th birthday. It's not your 30th birthday. And let's always be, let's, 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 let's get to the beginning of it. You had a birthday party prior in L.A., this is a week and a half later just, in NASA. It's just disgusting. As, like I just think. So this ain't whole, your, this ain't even your birthday. I just think that whole sister dynamic is disgusting. Like um, I wouldn't want. I didn't even like Tony then. Like I couldn't even listen to Tony music for a couple of days because even Tony, I kind of was just like Tony. Listen, the the albums gave me what I needed, but I don't want to know yeah, you in that yeah, light. Like. I, that, you can't that be whole, that nasty of a that person. That whole sister dy- again, I feel like that whole sister dynamic is toxic. And um I think that they all need some type of therapy. Um, you know what I, I think find that funny, they though? don't need to be on television TV. No more. exposing that type of toxicity as a family. Because honestly, it's just like the, it's it's disgusting. Like when I watched that episode, it just to see, I mean, I was just I was turned off by Tamar when they were on that episode of Ayala Fix My Life. I was disgusted. What? I was disgusted of her by then. <laughs> That's what she did. And I really liked Tamar in the beginning. Never season. cared for Tamar. I like Tamar. I like Tamar in the beginning seasons of Family Back. You know uh, what it Back is? Back to Family Values. You know what? So because sometimes. People can border with funny, like people I thought like she was funny. People I like the word was real. Funny. People I she was but witty. People, but I, people use the word real. I'm just keeping it real, and then like it's like a thin line between keeping it real and being honest with the person, right. and then just being mean spirited. I just and it was that episode where she was like, "Yo, husband, a computer geek, yeah, yeah, and sleeping yeah, around on you. Yeah. Yo, baby, daddy don't work, and he broke, and yo, and then she put a tongue. He's like, he's just using you for who you are, and it was just like you do that to your sisters at a vacation about like the people they're in love with. It was that episode. I was just like, nah. Yeah. I, I know. Girl. I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really in too heavy in it, but that episode of Ayana Fix My Life where. Tamar just kind of went off the the deep end and she was just acting out really bad and I was just like yo that's so disgusting like I I feel for Tony how when she says you know she loves her family but she doesn't like her sister she, yeah, she meant that shit like I feel that like no, that's well, just, like because I wouldn't I, and then it's just like it, I just feel like everybody's competing for attention that First of all, none of y'all are, and and not to say to single Tony out. I mean, we Tony Braxton is Tony Braxton, like a legend. Tony all, Michelle, Tony let it Braxton flow. Is Tony I love me some him. Seth none Fitz. of y'all Breathe have in. done what Tony Braxton has done. Brand none me. of y'all have put in the Wedding work, the sale. the time, the Boomerang. effort. The the more the than whatever, the, woman. the albums, the Libra, the, 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 whatever. Pulse. None of y'all Baby have Faith. done anything to act to to to, to justify. It's not, even, it's not even that too. This is the thing, okay. So I don't know. The, I just feel about, like they don't they don't have enough they don't have enough of um I don't know. It's just 
they don't have and none of the sisters have enough of what Tony has done to justify their actions on being other than being thirsty for camera time. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like Tony in this episode either. This was like the first time I kind of was just like because she was just so relaxed. She was just not like, even that. Like I didn't like, like the attitude she gave, and because I think she wanted to look unbothered, but she kind of looked like Regina George to me personally. She didn't look unbothered to me. She looked very much like a part of the Mean Girl clique, and Tony has done way too much in this industry with R&B and with who she's worked with to kind of be like that on a show. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want to see her like that. You don't do it way too much for me, but you actually don't... Tony really don't have to do nothing else. Yeah. I mean, let's always be clear. That first album, that second album, and that third album Secrets. is a tri fucking factor. Secrets. It's a trifecta. Secrets is it. Secrets is actually Secrets is my Play favorite. Flow but on the bodyguard. But that... On Wayne Tech Wayne Tech yes, But that... Her first album had like six top ten hits her sophomore album Unbreak My Heart stayed on top for 11 weeks number one on, on white people radio that wasn't even just white people radio that was white people radio too so and then to go through a bankruptcy come back get your 22 million from Babyface and them or LA Reed and them to come out with you know the heat and so that was one, her first three albums were amazing. More Than a Woman was a good album, but she got pregnant. Y'all didn't care. And then to even have like Libra and Pulse and then to have that uh, duet. Love, love and Marriage. Love, Marriage and Divorce, Divorce with yeah. Baby, Baby Face. Face. And still win a Grammy. That did well. And then this last album, Sex and Cigarettes, still was nominated for three Grammys. She's a full legend who actually can act as well. Her act is kind of strong, but... She's had movies that have done well. To sign a publishing deal with Lifetime and be able to pro and, and produce and do movies on Lifetime is a big deal. You know, to be able to be on Broadway with these great with these great plays is a big deal. To see her in like that space, I kind of was just like, all right. Usually, I'm here for Tony. I'm not even here for Tony right now. Y'all got to get this show off the air, especially because. Tamar and Tracy actually act just alike. They both want attention. They both overreact when they don't get attention. The thing, the, the thing that's different, with, different between Tracy and Tamar is Tamar can't fight. Everybody know that. Everybody kind of scared of Tracy and know if Tracy sets off too much that Tracy can body everybody in the room. That's one. Two, because... Tamar tends, they tend to chase Tamar out the room like, what happened? Why are you mad? They don't offer Tracy that same. They don't They don't go running behind Tracy to see because why Tracy's Tracy's the upset. Because yeah. Tracy is the, the pit bull of that group. And they're scared of Tracy. They're yeah, definitely scared of absolutely. Tracy. Tracy will beat the hell out of all yes, of them. Yes. Definitely Absolutely. Will. And the thing about Tracy and Tamar is they're the closer in skin complexion and they actually look the most alike out of all the sisters. I agree. So I think it's very funny that they can't get along when they actually look damn near just alike. Same complexion, damn near. And they have the same temperament. I kind of just want them off TV because I want to preserve, let it flow, <laughs> and breathe again in how many ways. And love to have brought you home last night. I want to be able to preserve my good sisters, you know, honestly, catalog. Nothing, honestly, nothing can, can diminish that. But I think at the and same no, time, I, I, I know because the honestly, comments on Twitter they was eating Tony a lot. They were I mean, just like that. At weird. the same time, at the same time, Twitter comments on Twitter can can go away tomorrow. If Twitter shuts down tomorrow, nothing yes can no. erase. Nothing can erase Tony's catalog. I mean, yes and no. Nothing. No, yeah, can yes, erase. because I mean, nothing. No comment can erase Tony. What Tony has done for the music industry for us for for for, it, it for can, young for, no i mean no cuz can no cause can't no comment tell me that how many ways can just the, the, but but not no, i'm just her. saying not in this instance because she hasn't done anything so volatile but Twitter has gotten people fired. Twitter has gotten people absolutely. removed. Absolutely. I'm I'm saying no, it from yeah, that yeah, standpoint. Yeah, so no, no. So no. Twitter can't Tony hasn't done anything that bad no, on Black yeah. Family Values that can yeah. remove her, but Twitter does have the power to remove people because oh, it has. Oh, of course, but at the same time, it cannot erase 
Um, and no, no, Twitter, nothing. Twitter, Twitter cannot erase her catalog. So no matter how many, what she does on TV. As long as it's in, it, as long as it's Twitter in a box. Twitter cannot because Twitter, erase her catalog. Because as much as we, as much as people shitted on R. Kelly and shit like that, people still listen to R. Kelly. Certain people, people still, still listen to and, R. But Kelly. But R. Kelly can't make money off R. R. Kelly can't tour now. It doesn't matter. So. It does not matter what R. Kelly can do. It doesn't matter what he can financially and it won't, make. And it won't actually erase us. But, but the thing about when you start erasing people online and doing things of mm-hmm. that nature, the generations behind you start forgetting those people because his music's not played on the radio anymore. So now, if you listen to R. Kelly, it is in your home. It's because your parents are playing R. Kelly. Right. If your parents are playing R. Kelly, you don't That's, even know who R. Kelly but a, is. Uh, but again, so then now, but it, again, it, it filters out the generation. Again, it still does not matter. If we say R. Kelly, R. Kelly is a pedophile, there's still a certain demographic of people that are still alive that will still bring that into their household and their children will listen to it and their children will be like, oh, shit, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that shit, I like that shit, I like that shit. They're going to listen to it and they're going to continuously listen but to that, it. But can you say that that demographic goes smaller because... It, it doesn't not, matter if it goes smaller, if it goes larger. It doesn't matter. There's still a demographic. But, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, will it really actually matter if it gets smaller and smaller? Because eventually, if it gets smaller, if it was all these people listening to R. Kelly, and I I think I read originally the article that R. Kelly was still being played, of course. Yeah, still being But played. eventually, if you keep kind of like closing in on people and closing in on people, eventually... Their music won't be here 10, 20, 30. It's a whole bunch of artists that came out 20, 30, 40 years ago okay. that we know nothing about. Right. So. We still listen to Marvin Gaye, right? We still listen to Marvin Gaye. But people don't really know Marvin Gaye's story but we the don't way you know, about to say. But I'm just saying, people still listen to Marvin Gaye, But right? they don't know Marvin Gaye the way. People, but there are people that know Marvin Gaye's story. I know, that, that, and that's interesting. That's, but that, I'm I saying, know Marvin people Gaye. People know Marvin Gaye's story. I know Marvin Gaye is a pedophile as well, and but I can again, go back and tell again, y'all the whole story, again, but a lot of people don't. Again, however, it doesn't matter if a lot of people don't. It's just that at the end of the day, there are still people that are going to look past that that they're going to look but past I think with the Marvin music. Gaye more people don't know than they do know when I was telling I just told some people the whole Marvin Gaye story and the whole but there's a lot story. of people that, but there is a lot of people that know R. Kelly's shit that still listen to him no but I think now we're just in a different space when it comes to R. Kelly and everything R. Kelly's just, been a pedophile since the 90s that's, but I think like I said I think we're in a different space now I know people who lived and died by R. Kelly and all of a sudden are like ding, 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 ding. we don't listen to R. Kelly anymore even I don't play R. Kelly as much and not because I don't give a shit it's just because when it like so much news has been in it and I already knew it. I don't even feel the same way listening to TP2. So nine times out of ten, yeah, I'll sing songs on here. And I'd be like, was that an R. Kelly song? Yeah. But I can honestly say my kids probably won't know R. Kelly's music because I don't even freely play TP2, which I absolutely loved. I don't even play TP2 by myself in my house like that no more. Yeah. So... Like, eventually, I do think people... Like, I, and that's... Tony aside, like, whatever happened to Braxton Family Values is going to kill her mojo. But I do think social media and how life happens, you can filter out people. And you have to be very careful on the people you're filtering out. Because, like I said, I still fully... I listen to Michael Jackson because I think Michael Jackson was innocent. I think the shit was weird. I think a lot of stuff was weird. But I think Michael Jackson was innocent. Even with R. Kelly, it was just the detail. Even though I knew he was a piece of shit even then, the details, and I watched the Boondocks episode as well, and I've, I've been thoroughly knowledgeable about R. Kelly's bullshit. But I don't even play R. Kelly right now. So I'm not going to play R. Kelly for my kids when I'm going to play 90s music. So yeah. I do think you can filter people out of at course, some point. You can filter them out. That's what I'm but saying. I'm saying social like, media has a big part of it. It does as well. have a big part, but at the end of the day, you cannot erase somebody's catalog. You can't erase their catalog, you but you can't, can you, you can't cannot, 
You, you cannot mute. I believe I can fly. You cannot mute. Yeah, yeah it's the muted. Of, you can't mute it. You can't because there are because people that honestly, still play it. Because I went to a wedding two weekends ago that they played that shit. That's them. That's but, a, I'm but I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying, worried about people right now. I'm saying eventually, eventually when we start filtering out, and I'm not even. And I'm saying like the next generation niggas ain't going up. Them niggas think Jaquise is the number is is. The king uh, that's of new, that's that new generation. So, like, I do think yeah. you can filter people out. R. Kelly's going to be filtered out in the Absolutely. next generation. Absolutely. Because, I mean, again, he, he's going to be definitely he, filtered out. Because of the, because of, one, because of how it's been played out for him. And then he hasn't had any hits, right? So, before, when a lot of this stuff was coming out about him, he would have hits. On top of hits, on top of yeah, hits. but I'm talking about like right now. And I'm again, I'm just saying. Previously, he had hits on top of hits that would distract public people, public per- perception about him because he had all these great songs coming out, right? But now that he doesn't have any great songs coming out, and all this crap is coming out about him, that all we can focus is on the crap, right? not on the music so we can't focus on the music because he's not coming out with shit so all we can focus is on the shit that he's done like oh shit like wow oh wow like wow he really said that shit oh wow like you know like we're really coming into consciousness about that but at the same time it's just like we have to um i just lost my train of thought yeah because i'm confused what you're trying to say but I, I, I'm not defending our again. I'm not defending. I'm not, no, Kelly. not that. I'm not you, defending. Uh, I'm not defending I, I, I R. Kelly. Lost. But all I'm saying, <laughs> all I'm saying is, like, I just personally feel like you cannot, like, yes, social media can cancel a person, but at the end of the day, you cannot cannot cancel a catalog. That's you all I'm saying. You cannot cancel a catalog, granted, because it's always going to be out there. However, you can stop that catalog being Absolutely. seen. Oh, yeah. And that's Absolutely. all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. So are we on the same team on that? Because I don't know what argument you just tried to give because that was confusing. No. I, like I said, I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. Because, I the mean, at the end part. of the day, I think social media has gotten a whole bunch of people up out of there. Our Kelly's one. And I agree with the fact that, like, I, I, don't, think I, don't, you don't, can, I don't think you can diminish the Cosby show. But what I do realize is if everybody takes the Cosby show off TV... That stops the Cosby show from being watched by other generations in case your parents are talking about it, in case your parents are going out of their so way to play on YouTube. Is that equivalent to I believe I can, you taking I believe I can fly off of streaming uh, platforms? Yes, because to be honest with you, OK, I know Space Jam. My little brother knows Space Jam. But but if my if. If my children don't know the Cosby show and I talk about Bill Cosby, is they, that the same thing? They don't know the Cosby show? I mean, nobody knows R. Kelly. That's what I'm saying. If you stop, at this point, I have a three-year-old niece. Right. If I do not implement certain things to her, they don't matter. Hence right. why a lot of people be like, I remember Elle, uh, what, what's the girl who just sung Boot Up? She didn't know, Are- she could name three Aretha Franklin songs. I was fucking appalled. You can't name Aretha Franklin songs? That's Aretha Franklin. I can sing 20 Aretha Franklin songs yeah. right now. You can diminish somebody literally just like that. If you do not play, I believe I can fly in your house. Or if they just watching Space Jam and you're not making it a big thing. Because the thing about Space Jam now is, or any movie now, if you watch it, like watching Space Jam then, the album came out. And then I Believe I Can Fly was on the TV all day and it was on the radio and blah, blah, blah. So you knew I Believe I Can Fly. At this point, if your kid is watching Space Jam, it's going to be like watching any other movie that has a climax song. They just, right. it doesn't mean anything. And in order to keep stuff going, that means your parents have to listen to it faithfully and be okay with it. That means TV and production and movies have to be okay with playing those songs and movies and stuff. At this point, nobody's going to play an R. Kelly song in a movie. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to sample an R. Kelly song. So the only way your kids no. are going to know... R. Kelly's not being played on the radio right now. It, it, his videos, his birthday. They stay doing on BET. They have BET um, Soul every 
black celebrities birthday they do a block of all their videos skip right over our kelly's you can kill somebody's entire legacy and that be I done agree. and the thing about the cosby show is i think for me i mean bill cosby was terrible he shouldn't have been drugging people and busting busting them down but even I had to like check myself because I remember like Father's Day, they did a whole bunch of like, who's the greatest father on TV? And to me, but I'm in this era where I'm like, well, all these shows don't exist without Bill Cosby. But then when I started seeing people's reviews, people my age and older than me was like, well, where's Cosby? People younger than me only know Bernie Mac, D.L. Hughley, Anthony Anderson. Um, but is, is so what's worse? having sex with 14 year olds or drugging people drugging women to have sex with them how did this even become a discussion I'm just saying because you just said you just said that that's a weird ass question I'm just I, I'm asking that's that's the question because you just said that it was like the Cosby show is this this and that and R. Kelly is is that right but what is worse? I'm not I'm not going to say which crime was worse because they're both fucking disgusting. But I will say that R. Kelly's music against Bill Cosby's legacy of what he did for the Cosby show is completely different than R. Kelly's music that's super sexual. And the only we can name two songs, The World Greatest or I Wish will be two. And I believe I can fly will be three. And I'll throw in I look to you because he wrote that and Whitney Houston sung it. But overall, R. Kelly's music is very sexual, very let me grind on you, let me have sex with you. Um, Bill Cosby showed at a time where black families couldn't be black families and black families could have these careers and have these these black kids that were doing black things. And it was the epitome of a black family household that people didn't know that could could happen. But he was still raping women. But I'm not I'm not debating what they did. Both of what they did was disgusting and gross. What I'm saying is, if we're looking at what two people did to push black people forward, yes, R. Kelly did great with R and B music, but what the Cosby Show, not Bill Cosby, what the Cosby Show in general did. For black people is the reason why we had the Hughleys, is the reason why we were able to have the Bernie Mac shows, the reason why we were able to have my wife and my kids and all the other black parent shows that had both parents working and, you know, kids in the suburbs. Both of them are pretty fucking disgusting and I care less about what happens to either one of them. But to compare Bill Cosby pushing the narrative of black people in a way that hadn't been pushed before, and we can throw in a different world with that as well. It's totally different than what R. Kelly did with his music. They're both are disgusting. I mean, I, I care less. I don't, and the thing is, I don't even watch the Cosby show like that. If we're being completely honest, I can name like three or four episodes from the Cosby show that I like, but I always knew who Bill Cosby was. I never, I can't tell y'all, I think I watched most of the first season, but I've never watched all of like, the Bill Cos the Cosby show like that because I ain't really find it that funny if we're being completely honest. But I do get he he Heathcliff Huxable and what Claire and the kids were doing. But to kind of compare what they did to women and then to like kind of compare their careers is just something that I find hella weird. But anywho, so this week, we're recovering from F boys. Fuck boys. I'm trying to figure out what he F that for. He was talking, found out his new girl can't suck no A. A. That I ain't fuck his friend. Tell him, Trina. Because she's a fuck boy, fuck boy. Hello, Queen of the South. I love a good Miami hit. I been, I was trying to put people on that song. Because she's a fuck boy, fuck boy. People didn't want to listen to me when I was trying to put them on Trina. And F boys. I was with it. Um, Actually, I found a definition. Well, I found a couple of definitions, and this is when I realized. Because she's a fuck boy, fuck boy. F boys really. Um, the definition of F boy really. Uh, 
it's broad, I guess. So here I have F boy and now he lying. He he's sleeping. He breathing. So <laughs> this definition I have is a he's weak. Awake, he's asleep. A weak. A weak man. The second one is mm. a man who has many casual sexual partners. Mm. I also have a F boy is that guy, the one who doesn't respect women but relies on them heavily. He's distant, doesn't care about people's time, and won't commit. He's self absorbed, does stupid things, and F with everybody's emotions. I feel like that's every guy that I've ever met. <laughs> I feel like that's every guy I've ever met. So what do you describe as a fuckboy? I describe as a fuckboy as um, a nigga that just don't tell the truth. Like, if you just want to fuck with somebody just, for, just to fuck with them. Like, when I say fuck with them, I mean, like, have sex with them. And, you know, you just you you don't want a relationship with them. But you just want to fuck with them. And then you don't want anything else. And you don't say that. I think you're a fuck nigga. Fuck boy, fuck boy. That's what I think you are. Um, A nigga that um, lies about just, just lies. Like, just tell your truth, nigga. Like, tell your truth. Whatever it is that you want. Yo, definition allow me, is so broad. These definitions for F boy be so broad. No, but allow no. It's 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 really 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 simple. Allow a female to decide what she wants to deal with. Because a lot of times I feel like guys feel like they have to like lie and convince and and uh, deceive and make believe all this shit and for a woman to deal with them. But in reality, um, a woman just want somebody that's just going to tell her that you allow me to deal with your ass allow me to be like you know what you a fuck ass nigga but i'll fuck with you anyway allow me to allow me to make that decision don't make that decision on my behalf i think that that is what constitutes a fuck boy fuck boy fuck boy is a nigga that will make that presumption on a woman and 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 lie and say oh i have two kids instead of saying i have one on i have two kids and one on the way so why he can't just be a liar why is he an f boy because it's it because you're not real you're not real I feel like people use F boy the way they use narcissistic these days. Like those are like the two. No, but no, 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 no. Nar- narcissistic is no, not, not, very, not, 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 not. Very a people. People throw out the word narcissistic and F boy like to every situation, and every person. It's no, so but tiring. narcissism is a very specific trait. So narcissistic tiring. personality disorder has a very specific trait to people. So no, a person cannot every person cannot be narcissistic people throw it out like every person is but people are not educated like people do not educate themselves like that there the narcissism is a very specific uh disorder and it is a disorder and if you look online it's it's a it's a fucking it's a personality disorder and a lot of a lot of people have it um, but a lot of people don't recognize that they have it. Um, but you know, you could be in a codependent relationship with somebody that you know you are an empath, and that person is it has narcissistic person. Not to say they're a hundred percent narcissistic, but they have personality traits that's borderline narcissism. Uh, it's it's a lot. So no. Fuck boy, fuck boy. <laughs> Narcissism isn't one of it, but I do think like fuck boys is a it's like it's like the what is it? What is the H E B brand of sodas? I don't buy them. What is the H E B brand? I know the one Dixie brand is check, but I, I can't tell you what. Hill Country Fair. Never fuck boys them. are like the Hill Country Fair of 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 niggas. They like the the the, I don't know the Walmart brand of sodas, 
but they're like the Walmart brand of sodas. Sam's Club. Sam's Club. They're like the. They're just root beer. They're not. Uh, what's, what's root beer's real name? Dr. Pepper. They're not Dr. Pepper. They're okay. Mr. Pibb. Okay. Does root beer actually have... It does. Barts. They're not Barts. They're just root beer. Root beer is so disgusting. I don't know how y'all drink what? that. I hate root beer and beer. Dr. Pepper, actually. Um, Ugh. Dr. But, Pepper's so uh, terrible. Fuck boys. I mean, they're, they're every... I mean, it's it's almost... It's like, it's like an infection. It's like HIV. They are Whoa. like one one in four niggas are a fuck boy, and they're it's disgusting. Like they're immature, they lack uh, they lack communication, they lack uh, common sense, they lack everything. It, one in four, at least, and in my in my perspective, it, it's one in four, and it doesn't matter. It, like the age range doesn't matter. It's like. They, they are fuckboys at 25. They're fuckboys at 40. They're fuckboys at 45. They're fuckboys at 30. Fuckboys at 35. So there there really is no range like to where they stop being a fuck-ass nigga. Like, it's, it's really no range. They, I feel like I have dated them all. And there is no range. Because they're all fuckboys. I'm so confused. Um, yeah, I don't. What are you confused about? Um, I don't know. I mean, fuck boys are terrible creatures. I think they they have levels. They confuse because you. When they I confuse was, you. When I was trying to, uh, when I was talking to my homegirl about this topic, I was trying to figure out like, what do I consider an f boy? And we were talking because I was like, I have an attraction to F boys in a sense. Mm -hmm. But then we started going through like, we went through like movie characters and that we considered F boys. And the Mm -hmm. thing was, I wasn't attracted to all the movie characters we named. Like we talked about Jody from Baby Boy. We talked about Terrence Howard's um, um, character in The Best Man, who I absolutely love. Um, we we talked about Jamie and Booty Call. We talked about Tupac and Poetic Justice. We kind of went through all these movies, or Marcus Graham and Boomerang, and we went through all these movies. And I was like, "Oh, he's an f boy, but I like him. Oh, he's an f boy, but I don't like him." And then we were trying to play in House Party one, two, and three, and Class Act, and we were trying to figure out like what was the but the these difference. are all fictitious. But they all still have the same traits of people I would date. Or they still, just because they're fictitious, don't mean they don't remind you of people in real life. Well, I'm not saying they don't remind you. Of, but these are all hypotheticals. Have you ever dated somebody? I literally just said right before I said that, I was like, I have an attraction to F-boys. So clearly my whole life was full of F-boys. So what has been the worst experience? Don't want to go into it on this podcast, but yes, I've had what? very terrible. I mean, this show's cute, but some things I don't want to talk about on this show. Okay. I mean, that's going to be that on that. But yeah, um, I always say, and me and my friend were laughing, and we were. Okay, y'all, I'm kind of low key mad because, like, we talked for like 20 minutes and apparently it didn't record. But, anyways, so like I was saying, me and my friend. Basically, we're having like a conversation about like my need to talk to F boys. And um, we were like talking about the characteristics of an F boy. And I don't think all characteristics of an F boy is bad. I think, you know, it just it's it's a thin line between F boy and like. I don't want to say good characteristics because I think the things I ask for isn't. I don't think it's terrible. I just think it could be used terribly, if that makes sense. Which I do think. I think everything can be used terribly. But some things I like in a guy is like a culmination of a tornado. And I understand that. And I think the same thing about myself, though, is certain things about me that's fantastic. I think used in the wrong way or too much could be... A terrible, terrible thing. So, like, like I was, I, I, I was describing 
like F boys in general, I feel are super charismatic, you know, very independent, very funny, very the life of the party, very, I'm a girl who likes to know the guy I'm dating is like super cool with all the people I know and doing all these great things for everybody I know and just cool. Like that makes me genuinely feel good. Like I had an ex-boyfriend that my family still loves. And the reason I loved him even more was because of how great he was in like the space of people and how kind he was and how, you know, everybody wanted him to come around. It was a good time and a good time in a way that, you know, he made everybody feel special and it was great, you know, but you can't make everybody feel too special. Cause sis. No, I don't want no fuck boy. I don't want no fuck ass nigga. I don't need no nigga lying. I don't need no nigga pretending. I, but I didn't say lying, pretend like that. Uh, they were just like nice people. But I think a lot of times, you know, certain characteristics, if you do them too heavy, can make you way uh, a terrible yeah, person. I, I, my personality is very, I just can't handle that. Like, I don't want no nigga that's super fucking popular. I don't want no nigga that, that has to be seen. I don't need no nigga, like, I don't need no nigga that thinks that he's prettier than me. Absolutely not. Because that is the problem. I don't need no nigga that's always on the scene, needs to be seen, high-fiving niggas every five, ten fucking minutes. Nah, uh-uh. I need a nigga that's ducked off in the back, that's quiet. I need a low-key-ass nigga. Well, that's why I have your personality, so that makes sense. That's, that's, again, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't need no nigga that... that but you ducked off boys. Fuck boys don't have to necessarily be super popular either. They be fuck boys regardless. I mean, the, I, how you I, describe the, them? Fuck, fuck boys are, are fuck boys regardless. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I feel like people that seek attention, that want attention, that, that are... I, t- I don't know, because... Like, I don't know, I guess I just, because I've seen it in the clubs, it's just like, niggas so, that somebody are wanna fuck be cool, like, niggas are always trying to be seen, they always gotta have a bottle in their hand, they always got a sparkler above them with some bullshit, it's always something, and I would never go for a nigga like that, because I feel like them type of niggas, they got low self-esteem, like... I need for a nigga that's going to pay for the bottle, that don't even want sparklers, that don't want shit. Like, they don't want nothing. Like, that's the type of nigga I'll go for. But people still know when those type of guys come in the room because I date those type of guys. Even though, even though, like... I date, like, non-sparkler type of niggas and people still know when they come in the room. But, but not necessarily because they not, they're not trying to make themselves known. But people, people know when you, when a nigga is a nigga. Like people know when that nigga's that nigga. Yeah. But at the end of the day. And they don't have to make themselves known though, but it's still, people no. know when that nigga's that nigga. But at the end of the day, I think that like, I would, I would never go for that nigga. I would never, if I think that a nigga is. So, I mean, what do you person, consider a fuck boy again? A person that is manipulative, a person that is um, has a negative. I I feel honestly because I truly feel like I can sense that energy because of the past relationships that I've been in. Any nigga that feels that they can control or dominate me, they're a fuck nigga. Any nigga that feels like they can. So that I mean that doesn't have anything to do with. Nothing else but your personal feel about their personality. No, no, that, no, no. That that's 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 not even what I feel. That's what I know. Any nigga that tries to control or dominate don't want them. Any nigga that tries to come in and they come in under a different. Uh, I get. I can't think of the word, but they come in under like a like a, oh I love you. I love the way you are. And then it, it comes off as like, yo, you weird. Like, that's weird. That's weird. Or I don't like that. Like, allow a person to be themselves. I hate when niggas don't allow females to be themselves. Or not even just let females be themselves, but allow females to change. Because we all have 
like levels of growth. Like when I was younger, I loved fashion magazines. I loved like going to museums. I loved like, and I still do, but like it was really, really, really heavy in my early 20s and late 30s. And I had a nigga that would always just like complain every time I asked him to do some shit like that. Or like ask him to like go to the to the museum or like uh, just like do like different type of artsy type shit. And um, and it would always be like an issue or like some type of poking fun. But like it was like out of love, but low key. It was just like trying to curb that that part of me that I really, really enjoyed. I don't like niggas like that. And I think niggas like that are fuck niggas. Any nigga that tries to change a female from the essence of who they are is a fuck nigga. Any nigga that tries to come in and dominate a woman or dominate their life or trying to make them feel bad for the shit that they like or whatever, they're a fuck nigga. Just because they can't pronounce the food that they like or whatever, they're a fuck nigga. I don't like niggas like that. And niggas with money, niggas with no money, all of them, all of them, a lot of them are like that. They're intimidated by strong women. They're intimidated by women that know more than them. And I don't like niggas like that. And to me, they're fuck niggas. They'll allow their girl to have to go and change their tire and change their oil and do all like the shit that I feel like a man is supposed to do for a woman. They're a fuck nigga. Because if you really fuck with a girl, you're not going to allow a woman to to do any of that shit for herself. You're going to do it for her. You're a fuck nigga. And you will get treated as such. Mm. And that's my story. Fuck boy, fuck boy. (laughs) Big facts. I got lost in that, but... Like who you like, don't like who you don't like. Fuckboy is a very broad um, description, apparently. Um, good sis, if your spirit just fell off, don't holler at him. Fuck that nigga, man. And no, just <laughs> always know you can't. I, I always say I want to reform fuck nigga, but also realize that some of these niggas not going to be reformed. <laughs> so... Choose who you deal with lightly if, you, if you're in the business of reforming or hoping to be reformed. Um, Don't reform nobody, man. Or hoping to be reformed. Um, like I said, I magnetically like a good F-boy, but with a stipulation and a boundary. And then and now that I've talked to multiple people about F boys, I realize like everybody's description and what they consider an F boy ain't an F boy. So maybe what I consider an F boy isn't necessarily an F boy. But you know, whatever. Blessed. I I I I, I can't. Mm. If it's toxic to you, then it's toxic. He's a fuck boy. You're a fuck ass nigga. Yeah, it, it could be different. And if he's trying, if he trying to change you. And make you something that you not. He a fuck ass nigga. But sometimes don't conf- don't confuse with making something you not with something that's better in a sense. If it's negative to your spirit and you, I mean that's it, the bottom line. But sometimes fit, people come yeah, in trying to help. Sometimes, sometimes people come into your life trying to help, bettering you. Definitely. But at the end of the day, most niggas is not trying to better you. Nah, I won't say Man. most. You, that's you. You don't run into a lot of terrible niggas, sis. Not a lot of terrible niggas. Jesus Christ. No, not a lot of, not a, a lot Jesus of terrible Christ. niggas. Jesus Christ. But a lot of niggas that want... It's like, I feel like... Like you have a, a butterfly, right? You want to pin the butterfly to a board and frame it. And put it on your wall. And you want that to be your crown glory. Instead of building a garden that cultivates that butterfly that nurtures that butterfly that always will bring back that butterfly and matter of fact not even bring back that butterfly but allow that butterfly to multiply and 
you will have multiple butterflies in that garden. A nigga would want to pin that butterfly to a wall versus build a, a garden to cultivate this butterfly and then allow that butterfly to multiply. That's how I feel. Because a lot of these niggas is weak. The fuck boy, fuck boy. That's all I'm saying. And that's real mm-hmm. shit. Because I dealt with that shit. That's real shit. Listen, I've had my share in a, a great, a, a great love. That was a terrible F boy. Jesus Christ, my heart Share still... your story. I mean, shit. I'm not. Why? I don't have to share everything on this show. I don't know these niggas. I mean, this is cute. I don't know these niggas. So I'll keep that between me, Jesus, and my mom and friends. But, um, you know, F boys get the best of us. They really, they really, they genuinely really do. And, you know, it's okay to move on. It's okay to understand you got caught. <laughs> it's okay to realize that you probably seen it at the beginning, but you ignored it because it was it was cute and cocky and it was it was life was popping. It's cute. It was cuter you thought it was, or you was bamboozled. But um if it if it honestly and like Adriana said, if it I don't think I think F boys have a generic adjective or trait or description. I think that F boys can be based on how your personality is as well. Cause I know certain people who have dated like I've dated and been completely fine and 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 life's been great and and love's been love and everything is love and all that bullshit. How have you dated? And you know How have you dated? I'm sorry? I said, how have you dated? What do you mean? You said how you've dated. How have you dated? I'm just saying, like, dated the same guys in the same arena I've dated or dated friends of friends, in Mm -hmm. the sense. Dated, like, a bestie of a bestie or a brother of the brother or whatever the case might be. And everything worked out fine. I think a lot of stuff, too, is based on how you are and what Mm -hmm. you want and what Mm -hmm. you ask for and what you accept. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you're the big bad wolf and you still accept pennies and don't even realize you're accepting pennies so or or know you're accepting pennies but don't even get why you're accepting pennies because once again me and my therapist have been talking but um i do think you do you think that you've been accepting pennies we're not talking me and my therapist have been talking once again asking it's a yes or no question that's the question i want to answer here Um, But I do think in general that you need to honestly, you know, like I said, you don't go through a fuckboy phase anyway, because high school and college is like a bullshit ass time. Even post-college, I think around 25, what, was it like 25 or 26? Maybe like 25 or 26, I was like fully like, I no more fuckboys, or I kind of was like, okay, a little bit of fuckboys. But you don't go through an era of fuckboys anyway, though. Because that's just life. And that's just people being people. And there's nothing wrong with going through it. Now, when you turn, like, what, what age should you be fuckboy free? You I really should be fuckboy free your whole life. But you really should, like, do better. I want to say, like, 25, 26. That's like grad school. I feel like I graduated grad school around that time. So. Oh, what? Yeah. That's cause, prime. That's prime. <laughs> that's prime time. No. Girl, what? Grad? What? Girl, 25, 26? You don't still know shit? 25, 26? Are you serious? I am. Have you been on a college campus? And, and yes, I've been, and, on, and, I've and been on a college, college campus. Have you said that? That, that? that is like... That is... 25, 26? You think that you have know? You sat a on duck a, and dodge a Have you sat in dorms? Are you and, serious? At, <laughs> at 25? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh I my did God. four oh years of fam. Four years of fam will do twenty five to you. I don't know about you. I don't know how y'all live y'all lives. If y'all live Yikes. y'all lives different, great. Listen. Twenty five. Y'all think y'all figured out a fuck nigga? 
Listen. <laughs> they just in their prime. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else. They're just in their prime. Four years oh God. at Florida <laughs> Florida A and M University. Five. Yikes! That's not it. Yikes! That's not it for you. Four years at Florida A and M University and and dabbling at Florida State University, and then coming off a couple of NBA runs. 25, 26, A bitch like me was all whole and tired. Jesus Christ! God bless. Yikes. Yeah, I, I lived a different life than I guess you, but sis, whew, a bitch was tired. And and that ratio to male to female and fam you, damn, it was 100 to 1. 100 bitches to one nigga? Imagine the mess. Jesus Christ, it, it really was like 7 to 1. Ain't that terrible? You went, I went to school and this shit was dead ass like 7, 8 to like 1. How was niggas not fucking the same people? Jesus Christ. I'm glad I didn't go to college. Like now that. that shit was life. Fam, you shout out. What up, niggas? But yeah, do y'all. I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to go through a fuckboy phase anyway. Bless. I hope you get through it without no babies from that nigga. I hope you get through <laughs> it without marrying part. that nigga. That's the killer part. Don't marry yeah, that nigga and don't, don't have no kids with no, that No, not even marry because you get a divorce. Don't have no kids Don't have no kids that from that nigga. You can get married. Divorce is always an option. Niggas is getting divorced in the drive through at this point. Let me tell you something about a fuck boy. Don't have no baby though. You don't want to be tied to the nigga years later. It's like two niggas specifically that I am so happy I am not tied to right now. Like, but like I think about that shit randomly like damn I was this close to being tied to that nigga forever like Jesus Christ y'all just let me raw dog the fuck boy like this oh my god oh oh my god if I would have had a baby imagine my life oh Jesus the fuck boy fuck boy listen that's all I got you gonna fuck with fuck boys. It's gonna be a good two to ten years you got. Sis, they fuck boys at 40 and 45. They are, you got about 15. I'm not saying like that. I think some people like kind of grow out of it mentally before others. Like women. I'm not saying men. I'm saying like no, I'm some saying. some girls really be like, I'm not doing that shit no more. And I know a couple of girls are just like, listen, I'm about to be celibate. Shout out to my celibate sisters. I know some girls that's just like no red flag I'm done and that's that and I know some people that found like the good guy and got married then you got hot messes like me who kind of like to still dabble in the streets I'm saying you're a hot mess not it's a hot mess not hot mess on like that like hot mess for conversation and entertainment purposes you got a hot mess like me you kind of like to dabble in the streets so you know just listen no they out there niggas are like fucking predators and they see weak links. And they see big mouths and weak links. Just be be blessed, good sisters. Jesus Christ. And don't have no babies. That's all I can push on this one. Don't have, if you know that nigga ain't shit, you don't, even if he gonna be a good daddy, because you know, I know some, I know some fuck boys even then, I was just like, God damn, he gonna be such a good dad. And they are really good fathers. You don't wanna be tied to that. You just, girl, you want a happy home, girl. You don't want like a split home. You don't want, like, him to be a good daddy. And then he, like, he a reformed fuck boy to some other bitch. Like, hey, that's terrible. Like, y'all don't, I would be so mad if I would have had a baby by, like, a fuck boy. And then he would have got with the next bitch and became a reformed fuck boy. Oh, my God. It's just, leave fuck boys alone. They be ruining your lives, good sisters. Amen. And that's all I got on that. Even though I still do wink. No, I had to take a break from the streets because I knew my ass. I was like, God damn, it must be me. And sometimes that's the thing, too. If you get a whole bunch of fuck boys or like dating like terribly. I remember talking to like I was talking to my mom and I was dating this guy and she was like, you attract the same type of dude. This was literally like two years ago, two and a half years ago. And she said I attracted the same dude. And I was like, hella, I remember being so mad at her for saying that. I was just like, what do you mean I attract the same nigga? What? Eh, eh. All the extra dramatics. I'm mad because like I was offended. And I knew when she said that exactly what she was saying because I could think about the dudes she was kind of pinpointing 
in the situation. And like, I was offended because I wanted to think that I had grown so much since my heyday and since, you know, even high school. Like, I thought I had grew. Like, what? And she was like, you attract the same dudes. And then I realized that the fuck boys wasn't the problem. It was actually me who was the problem, who kept like sliding into that arena or offering that arena to my space. And so sometimes if you are the type of person that keeps saying it's a group of guys and they're all the same, and they keep doing the same stuff and it's you. If you keep attracting the same people around you, nigga, it is it's definitely you. And I know when my mama said that to me, it was like my first coming to Jesus moment. That was like, oh, I attract these people. This isn't like odd. This is me. This is I, I'm opening the door to this shit. I, I, I beg for this to come my way. I'm I'm feeding the homeless base. Well, not the homeless homeless. You know, but I'm feeding the bo- I'm feeding the monster at this point. And I remember like this is this is damn it two and a half years ago, and I was like irate. Like I was so annoyed I damn near want to hang up the phone on her. And like that was probably one of the most accurate statements I have, I have ever heard about myself ever in life. Cause she was just kind of like, Oh, you like the same type of nigga. And it wasn't even an eight, even though I do date 10 to 15 years older than me, at the time. Like, in that space of when she said that, the guys I had dated, I think one had been actually my age, and then the next one was my, had been, like, four years older than me, and then the next one was, like, 13 years older than me, and it was one that was, like, 14 years older than me, and it was, like, a 10-year difference between another guy, and, you know, they all had different occupations, they all made coin, but it wasn't, like, the same type of coin, they all had, like, good jobs, and entrepreneurs, and, you know, all these things, and... My mama was like, and, and and one of them hadn't been married and divorced. One never been married, no kids. One had a kid. They were like, they they had the same general attitude, but they were so different. And like, I literally had to like sit down and like write down this the 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 same the things that were alike and different about them because I was trying to figure out what was drawing me to you know those type of spaces and people and why I needed to win so bad or why was I acting like I was on flavor of love all the time whatever the case might be so you know sometimes if you dating a whole bunch of fuck boys and I give you a period it's gonna be a time that you are because that's life and you gotta learn and blah 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 just don't have no baby don't let that give you no STDs or at least let him give you something curable, you know, neither here nor there. But if it is the same dude all the time and he just in different clothes and different shades and different cities and states and jobs, get your fuckboy repellent, sis, because it's you. And sometimes you need to be okay to know it's you. And that's all I got on that. We got a letter, though. I find that shit. Wait for it. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. And it's too long. But, um, so this week on Moesha's Diary, uh, we're going to name her Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman is the first black aviator woman. And she's not even the first bl- black woman. She's the first woman in general. Um... She wanted to, like, fly planes. She was from, like, Texas. She wanted to fly planes. Her mama let her move to Chicago with her brothers. She moved to Chicago. She was giving bitches nails and French manicures and and pedicures and stuff. And she was like, I'm going to fly this plane. Of course, she couldn't because it's, like, the early 1900s, you know, racism. So they wouldn't let her fly, fly any planes. Uh, It was like a black guy who was a part of like the plane situation. So he was like, listen, if you really want to fly planes, you can go overseas. You can fly planes. You just got to learn. I'll pay for it. But you better come back. She goes overseas to Europe. She learns how to fly planes. But, you know, planes wasn't like hella safe like then back then. So um, 
she watched a lot of people die, like in the process of just even learning and training because, you know, it wasn't as safe and they didn't have like parachutes and all that extra shit. So she ends up learning how to fly a plane. She's like certified to be an international pilot. She comes back to America, you know, racism. And it was like, no good sis, you can't fly no planes here. We don't like black people. We don't like women. No. She go down to Florida. Florida tells her the same thing. We don't like black people. We don't like women. You can't fly planes, you know, whatever. Even though she was hella popular because she was like the first black woman that can fly planes. So she goes back to Europe. She learns how to do tricks. She comes back to America. She does tricks. Everybody loves her. She out here busting wheelies and flipping out planes in a whole nine. And then she gets into a terrible crash. She dies at 34. But she, Betsy Coleman, is still the first black aviator uh, woman to fly planes and be certified. So shout out to that good sis. So this letter comes from Betsy. And Betsy says, Okay, so my mama been wilding out in these streets for the past few months. My sister, my mom, and I are on the same car insurance. When I first got on, she said that she would only charge me whatever they charge her to add me. 170 Fair. Keep in mind, my sister pays 80 So fast forward like a year and a half, I find out that the monthly total on the plan is 248 Yeah, do the math. So I'm like, what the F? kind of s is this i ask her about it and she says you're upset that your mother isn't um isn't paying anything on the car insurance and and how dare you and in a how dare you tone so i walk away because i don't want to say anything too rude a few days later i decide we will talk about what happened before the relationship was too severed mind you those few days the energy in the house was trash as fuck like low she didn't even speak to us and when she did say anything it was through text the texts are all all about bills and some fake a issues she has with us like we need to help her clean her house or how we need to make sure her door is locked so i go in her room and i tell her i'm heartbroken about the whole situation with the car insurance and i thought it was necessary to talk as adults woman and woman if we wanted to be able to get past this she says i don't see anything wrong with what i did i'm sorry you feel that way we can just agree to disagree on this and not talk about it i say okay and i'll walk away at this point i'm realizing that she's just a narcissistic ass person and these past few months have truly proved it she slams cabinets doors huffs and puffs Sometimes through the house, through the house, all kinds of slow shit. She told us we gotta get our own cell phone plans, and that that is best. We all go our separate ways. She switched the cable from my sister' name to hers. She removed us as authorized users on the T-Mobile account. She started locking her bedroom door when she's not in the house. She had us put in writing when we were moving out and made us say, "I'm holding," and made sure to say, "I'm holding y'all accountable to this." I'm not changing my mind. Girl, F you. She's crazy as F. Controlling as F. Gonna tell us if we keep the kitchen clean, then we can't, if we can't keep the kitchen clean, then we can't use it. The F in kitchen? What the hell kind of S is that? Gonna, she gonna tell my Grammy, granny, I just know they ain't gonna be out by the 20th. I know that for a fact. Shake my head. I laugh at this because I see right through all of this. She's guilty and she wants us to turn the situation on us to try to make sure to make it seem that we're the ones that are wrong when it's really her. She told my granny we ignore her text and we don't speak to her and we don't clean up. Basically trying to play victim like she ain't create this toxic A environment. Wild as F, right? Yeah, I know. But that's what I'm recovering from now. A toxic. Hold on. Hold on. A tox. Uh, she's recovering from a toxic nut ass lady. There we go. And then she attached some text messages between them. You know, it's so easy for people to throw around that narcissistic personality. <laughs> y'all love, bitch. Y'all love narcissistic in a way that I cannot. Listen. 
So, hey, uh, I just, listen. Oh, y'all. So, uh, I, and I just Googled it. So, narcissistic personality disorder involves a pattern of self-centered, arrogant thinking and behavior, a lack of empathy and consideration for other people, and an excessive need for admiration. Others often describe people with narcissistic personality disorder as cocky, manipulative, selfish, and patronizing and demanding. Listen, what I heard necessarily was not narcissistic. I think that perhaps counseling is in order. Um, you know, y'all have to really get a grasp of what narcissistic personality disorder is. Um, there are a lot of people that are narcissistic that don't know that they're narcissistic. They have been raised, perhaps, by narcissistic parents. They don't know. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to it than just being, I'm a narcissist, where that person's a narcissist or whatever. Because a lot of times, people don't know that they're narcissistic because they, they don't understand what they're doing. But this whole letter, this whole thread, it just seems like miscommunication to me. It just seems like a whole bunch of lack of communication and 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 honestly I just feel like you need to live your life without your your, your family your parent your mom your dad whoever's input it's not about them being narcissistic because if they were narcissistic they would try to control you they would try to gaslight you they would try to make you feel like your problems aren't as big as theirs. Those are narcissistic personalities. Um, they would try, uh, that control factor is is the biggest thing about narcissistic personalities. It, to me, I don't, I don't, I don't see that in this, in this, uh, in this letter. Um, I just honestly feel like there is a serious lack of communication. And if you feel what you feel, then you need, you need to express that and let it be and move on about your life um you're a grown person you can do what you want to do live your life live your fucking life remove yourself from the situation pray for them allow them it, it, it doesn't matter like just remove yourself from the situation and live your life like not everything is about narcissism while there are people that have that I don't think this per this situation is necessarily like that. I don't know. I need y'all to find another synonym to narcissi narcissism and narcissistic. But, nar over. but narcissism has a specific personality. I think a lot of y'all really like... Like, y'all have to Google that shit. I think a lot of y'all overuse it and, and, and you know, want to implement it and... and In your and, situation. And put it, on a, situation. put it on everybody. Like, I draw a bunch of narcissistic people to me. Okay. Are you not narcissistic? How like how is no, everybody that's it's narcissistic not, come to you? It's not, it's not even like, like you draw me you out. draw you draw narcissistic people to you, but I just that means that okay that you are a um, you're an empath you're, emp you're an empathetic person right you're a codependent person so codependency codependency see see you have to look at why you attract nar narcissists are attracted to people only a certain group of people narcissists are tra are attracted to codependent people if you're a codependent person that means that you are most likely prone to be um to attract a person that has that type of personality because that personality is going to feed into your lack of self-esteem your lack of whatever and they're going to love bomb you they're going to do everything they can to get you and then they're going to break you down i need some of y'all to find a new synonym um, <laughs> that's that's I mean, real shit uh, that's uh, real uh, shit that's cute but find a new synonym um or all y'all in y'all psychology one-on-one -on -one and sociology one-on-one -on -one classes and y'all using y'all googles um don't um but neither here nor there so uh you actually sound terrible no shade um 
you you wrote this letter to make your mom seem like a bad person, but in the letter, I don't really feel like you your mom's yourself, a bad person. You make yourself sound like a you bad sound person. like a terrible tyrant and um, a spoiled brat. Mm-hmm. And this is coming from a person who has been a terrible tyrant and a spoiled brat. Um, you don't mention any other bills in that letter. And if you paying one eighty get you a house, some cable, some lights, a oh kitchen. God. Oh, in a bathroom that. I'm trying to move in with your mama sis amen 180 you just paying 180 for life <laughs> bitch do you know how much I pay for rent <laughs> 180 nigga my I just had to call goddamn Reliant and figure out why the fuck was my lights $140 180 I literally paid 142.17 trying to figure out what the hell am I running in my house how the hell is my goddamn life so much and I'm a single person without a goddamn animal. Literally me. Yesterday. 180? Nigga, I still pay 130 for my DUI. Because guess Why what? Pay because I owe them $3,000 to the city and I still Why? gotta pay them 30 to six. Maybe because my alcohol level is so high. Who am I to complain when I got a DUI I didn't kill nobody? When they said, hey sis, you gotta pay three thousand no, dollars to no, Austin. No. I was like, I was like, hello, TDBS. Well, you're at all level, not TABC. Texas driving. I, I know the initials. I said Texas drivers. No, because my and my tech my I got alcohol the was high in Harris County. I got the. Well, I'll, I'll bring you my paper out when we're done with the show. They want three thousand dollars. Still, you can pay the three thousand, or you can pay thirty dollars a month. And then guess what I found out last week. Then after a year, they tack on. So basically, it's a thousand each year, which would have made it three thousand dollars. Cause I, you have a total of three years to pay it. In my mind, cause I wasn't and doing this the was math. In what Fort Bend? This is Fort Bend. I'll bring you the paperwork later. It was thirty dollars a month, but in my mind, when they said thirty dollars a month, it never dawned on me that thirty times twelve or thirty, a little over thirty times twelve, did equal three fucking thousand dollars. So I was sort of fun with them playing my, my monthly bill last month, and it was like, oh, you know, next month it'll be a year since you've been paying this. So they tack on another thirty dollars because they actually even it out where it'll be a thousand dollars per month. $1,000 per year, but if you ain't finished the first year, they attack on the other year. And I was like, oh, TXDPS, which is Texas Department, Department of Public Services. Services. What the figgity fuck? Safety. Whatever. They still get my money. What the figgity fuck? That's what I'm paying. I pay some money for some cable, but then I had to add other people on the cable so my family can watch it in different cities. And you weren't about $180? Like, oh, I wish. I wish I lived somewhere for $180. Did your probation officer tell you this? I'm sorry, what? Did your probation officer tell you this? That had nothing to do with my probation officer. This is literally Texas Department Services no, 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 in Austin, but, Texas. But no, no, no. But they're supposed to tell you that. No, no, no. No, ma'am. They're supposed to tell you that. They're supposed to tell you your fines and fees for... She knew about the fines and fees, but that has nothing to do with my probation. I'm off probation. I understand I'm bringing, probation. No, I'm bringing the paperwork. I'll, I literally will literally yes. will give you the paperwork. Do you need me to pause this and bring you the paperwork so no, you won't keep adding it? I'm just but like, literally still paying because and maybe it's because you didn't crash into a cop car. I also crashed into a cop car. Y'all keep forgetting I hit two but, cop cars. But but that should have been uh, that should have been put into that, your court. Your no no court no. Fees. Nigga, are you a lawyer? Uh, I I know a little bit about a little no, bit. I'm just well then find me a lawyer so then we can talk about it but it really is be paying TX Texas Department of Safety Public Safety Public Safety right. in Austin Texas that's who gets my coin but you know no harm no foul when I talk to the other people some other people who had to pay it maybe it's because I hit a cop car I did hit a whole cop car technically too but you would not my business honestly I feel like you would have paid that with your... No, nah, uh, but this was jump when we actually, when I got my DUI, all this was brought to me from the forefront with my lawyer. This was all... Again, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what yeah, me and my, No, me and my lawyer, This they, I didn't just get a letter in the mail and they were like, hey girl, yeah. you owe this money. That never happened. This was all a conversation amongst my closing out of the case. So this wasn't like a shocker. 
I knew I, I could have paid two. It was actually like two thousand eight hundred and something. But when you had to, pay, when you decide to pay in increments outside of court fees, yes, it was outside of court fees. It was outside of what my probation was. This was all a conversation between me and my lawyer. But I'll be sure to give you the paper, I guess. But that is what I'm worried about. You worried about a hundred and fucking eighty dollars. That is something I can't relate to. And then the fact that, like, you're complaining about your mama locking her bedroom door. It's her bedroom door. Who cares if she locks it? Why the fuck y'all going in there anyway? Makes no sense to me. The only time, truth be told, when I was going to my mama room was to grab her jewelry, which she hated, go in her closet to get something, which she hated, grab her shoes, because my mama has the best shoe collection, which she hated. There was no other reason why I was in my mother's room. Literally no other reason outside of shoes, Jewelry, maybe fragrances because she always had good perfumes. But why y'all in your mama room anyway? How y'all even know the door is locked? If her door is closed, why y'all jiggling the handle? Like, this makes no sense to me. Why aren't you cleaning the kitchen when you cook food? Why aren't you cleaning the kitchen when you in that bitch? It does not make sense to me. You really try to make your mama seem like the bad person, but really you sound like a spoiled fucking brat. And honestly, you and your sister need to move out on y'all own. If all this is a goddamn problem, move out on your own. That is always an option. You Parents don't owe y'all shit. And let me tell you something. That's a hard pill to swallow. And I love when people like tell they sorry sap stories about when they turned 18, how their parents, you know, was trash. But I feel bad. Generally, I did. And I thank God for my mother because she wasn't like a parent that threw us out when we turned 18. You know, she just threw me out like last week. So I'm not one to like, I sympathize with you. But I mean, I can't genuinely relate. Like, I get mad about shit my mama won't do now and I'm 33. And it'd be like, you won't do, wait, what? I But I understand that's me being a spoiled brat. Um, your parents don't owe y'all nothing at the 18. Y'all parents really only owe you, like, food, shelter, and, like, half decent clothes when they have you. And that's very unfortunate. And I don't think that's all parents should give you. I think when people go out to have kids, I think they should should want to give them the best of the best of the best of the world. And they should. But parents don't owe y'all shit. And they definitely don't owe y'all shit when you turn 18. Like, they really don't. And you sound terrible and spoiled and like a brat. You live with your mama and you ain't mention all the bills, but that 180, that is a win. That is a win more than I could see a win, more than I could know a win, more than a win could be a win could be a win. Like right now, I will move in with somebody if they told me 180. I will be happy to live with somebody for 180. You know, coin is life costs. I don't know about you, but life costs. Life costs you, huh? Doesn't do how does air run? Girl. You know? $6 do you a eat? Day. Do you eat? Like how does how does this happen? No, 180. How no, does first of all a shower? You know, showers cost. First of all, let me tell you something. My little brother lives with me, and I'm at the point at the brink of frustration because he, I to me, feel like he thinks money grows on trees. Money doesn't grow on trees. I work really fucking hard to maintain my living, my lights, my electricity, uh, like internet, uh, fucking insurance for the apartment. Oh, and the, uh, yes. the apartment yes. itself. Just in case some shit happens. The, and that's just in case. It may not ever happen. Might not. <laughs> and that's just a, just in case. And I got to fight them if they do happen because they're going to be mad. Honestly, I feel like the young the younger generation, they are so babied. Because um, my little brother is babied. He's he's coddled. He's he, he thinks that the money grows on trees. He thinks that life is is uh, oodles and noodles and he thinks that because he has a college degree that people are just gonna hire him off the bat nigga like nobody cares if you have a degree do you have experience that's what i keep trying to tell him well that that that's a double sword now, if you're, now, again fyi now, people who go to college i'm gonna tell you no, what no, trying no, to no, do. That, wait 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 i'm not saying that people who go to college uh, and get a degree, it doesn't matter. No, I'm not saying that. But all I'm saying is, if I never went to college, but I have more experience than you, and I I know more about a position than you, and I and I have more uh, awareness than you, and you just have a degree, you're not going to get the job because you don't have the experience. I do. 
and I know how to nav- I know how to do this. I know how to do that. I know that. Now that's kind of where both face because you know sometimes we be on them applications again. They say college degree or they again, say two years again. Again, you gotta, you gotta I know pick people. Your sword. I just know people, and I know I know. I guess because I know me. And I know situations that I've been in. I've been hired over people with degrees. And I know people who had to go back and get their degree because they hadn't been hired. So it's, it's both and ways. Again, I and I, I told my younger brother that you should not rely just be on the fact that, oh, well, I have a degree. I should Yeah, I'm going to tell you what y'all need to do. My the, the girls I went to school with who really came out with good jobs... They were the type of people that were interning the whole time they were in college. I, like I said, I need to write a book about how to fuck up in college because I fucked up the whole thing. Both my friends that end up with really good jobs right out of graduation had been interning since their sophomore year at their companies, at the companies that actually hired them. So use college the way college needs to be used. Don't be going there like I went in and thought you was going to be fly, fly fresh. I was fly fresh and kicking it because... You still need to put in a lot of work in college as well. It's just not a ride. Again, like I said, you cannot depend on that that just aspect alone because that's not going to help you get to where you want to be. Yes, it's it's going to get you some points, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the experience, you don't have what these people are looking for, they're not going to hire you. They're not. They're just not. I know people that have doctor's degrees, doctrine degrees, and it took them forever to get them to the point. And I'm not advocating on not getting a degree because if you can afford it, you can you can facilitate that by all means. Get whatever degree that you are allotted or whatever, get it. But as for me personally, my experience has allowed me to get where to get where I I don't I don't need that I don't need a degree and what I try to explain to my younger brother is that you are competing with people that have more experience than a degree you're competing with people like that and you have to put yourself in a position to where you not only have to have the degree, but you also have to have the experience. And that is what's invaluable because, yeah, you have a degree, but you ain't got no experience. Niggas don't give a fuck. But if you have both, then wow, you can shut everything down in that interview so basically he just an intern the time he was there no i'm just saying like he can he can he i mean he's just an intern he didn't do nothing besides go to school that's what i'm asking i mean i don't i don't know what i don't know what i can only i can only say he didn't intern or work while he was in school no no, okay no uh uh-uh but at the end of the day i just feel like the younger generation seems very self-entitled they, they seem very, um, and you seem self-entitled. You seem like you're entitled to a certain life that you didn't work for. You seem like you're entitled to something that um, just because your mom has it, you, you should have it. No, you're your own person. And I feel like everybody should work for what they, what they have. Granted, everybody's situation is different. I don't know. For me, I, I my parents never gave me shit. Listen, sis. So at the end of the day, like I just feel like you need to ease up on your folks. You need to put more responsibility on yourself and on your own actions. And you need to decide what you want for your life. And you need to go get it. And it's not your mother's job for you uh, to, to to figure out what you what your life should be like it's not your father's job it's not your mother's like it's not anybody else's responsibility but yours and if you want a certain outcome for your life then you need to fucking fight and work hard to get it it is not your parents responsibility after you are 18 when i was 18 my mother gave me two choices live by her rules or get the fuck out i got the fuck out like, at the end of the day, you sink or swim. Sink or swim. Listen, good sis. Sink or swim. Sink or swim, sis. 
Swim. If you ain't, if you don't know how to swim, you better learn how to fucking swim because the real world is a motherfucker. You better learn how to fucking swim. Swim. And it's a deep world. It's deep. Ain't no bottom. Listen, it ain't no bottom. It ain't no bottom. It's a deep world, man. You niggas, <laughs> yeah, you niggas will die. It's a deep world. Sis, listen, like I said, don't depend on as your parents. A, as a person who has lived that, don't, you, you're messing up a thing that you, a good thing that you have going and you really do need to, you need to think about uh, your attitude and how you handling your mother because luckily for me, I, I still have a very independent and vulture-esque attitude. So I got I got put out my mom's house when I was like, I was like 26 or something, 25, 24. Um, I got put out like dad ass had a pet. We it, it was it was a terrible night. We got into a physical altercation, and my mother put me out. Like, and I know everybody everybody knows on this podcast how I adore my mother, and I was I'm super obsessed with her. But that was like a really dark time for us. And um, when I got put out, like I got put out, and it was like nowhere I could go. She had, she called my grandma. It was like oh me and oh me and her had. Fought. Like we fought, we fought on the steps and the steps going up to our bedrooms. And um, she politely, I woke up that morning, she politely was like, get the hell out. And it was like, how, how you get out? Like, sis, what do you mean? Where do I go? I just graduated from college. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I think at the time I said I was, I was getting my master's, but I wasn't fully focused. So I think, because the, the reality of my master's is I failed out the first time. And then, no, I might have fell out the first. I fell out the first two times, actually, with my master's. The third time was the charm, and I got my master's. But um, I didn't know I, what I was doing. I didn't have a job. I had just graduated. I bullshitted college. Like I said, I always say I'm going to write a book about everything you don't do in college. I bullshitted. So um, came out, couldn't get a job. All my friends had jobs. All the boys I dated were doing well. I had nothing. And I got put out. I had a packed my suitcase and I had to go and I had to go stay with the friend who was living with her mom and you know it was a very like dark time and then I was too embarrassed because she had called my grandma and my family gossips a lot so I know you know everybody already knew what happened so then I didn't want to call call my aunt and them and be like can I come stay with you and they lived in like the next city over like I literally had to figure it out I ended up figuring it out it was tough it was crazy I moved back in with my mom right before I moved to Houston. And she knew I was moving to Houston. So I even had a deadline then. She was like, okay, you can come here and save rent. But it was like, a, I think I might have stayed with her like three or four months. And then I moved to Houston. But, um, I mean, I got, I got, I got put out in the worst way. Like, <laughs> I ain't had no money for no de- deposit on no apartment. I got put out. It was a mess. And she wasn't going to help me. And, you know, it builds character. So from that experience, what I've learned for me personally is I could have put myself in a better situation if I would have not been so into myself and not such a terrible tyrant and not thinking I was owed some shit because she had me. Because from that moment before, everything was give me, give me, give me. Or I need and I'm here and you chose to have me and I didn't ask to be here or whatever the case might be. And that's not the truth. Like, it's not until I started talking to other people. I was like, oh, parents really be out here giving a bare minimum. And then when you start 18, be like, all right, bitch, what? What's the purpose of having kids? That was me. But, you know, you sound very terrible. And... You know, this is the time that you need to have a conver- uh, an adult conversation with your mother. You need to apologize. That if that's the one, even if it's not even just the one eighty, if at most you paying like six, seven hundred dollars, that's that's still cheaper than rent. You know what I mean? I don't know how much people. Uh, 
my rent's higher than six seven hundred dollars. So if you paying six Minus seven ten twenty, if you're if you're paying six or seven hundred dollars altogether, you're still in a win situation. That's a situation where you can set yourself up to have a better life and whatever needs to happen for you to be better once you leave your mother's house. So you do owe her an apology. You sound like a trash ass person. And I'm saying that as a person who's been a trash ass person and, or who still had trash ass person ways here and there when it come to me and my mama when I need some shit. Cause she just really told me off like a, a week ago about some shit. So, I mean, just, you owe her an apology. You sound terrible. You really try to make your mama seem like a bad person. If her door's fucking yeah. locked, that's her business. If she changed the cable to her name from your sister name, well, thank God it's not your sister name no more. If you paying 180 and that's the only thing you paying, that's cool. If you don't clean the make your ass pay more. Listen, if you ain't fucking cleaning the kitchen after you cook, you a dirty bitch. I don't know what else to tell you. This was even if you weren't even if you didn't make all the dishes. That still. How many dishes is it for grown people? Even if you ain't make all the dishes, I make my little brother clean the dishes after me and he don't cook shit. I just, at the end of the day, you sound like trash. Like, I don't know, I don't mean to say it like that, but I mean to say it like that. But you really try to make this letter seem like it was about your mama when this whole time you sound like the bad person in this letter. And, you know... Allow us to be the mirror, sis. Allow. Because in, in, in all honesty, you're going to regret if you have to leave... And you don't have your shit together. Yes, it does bring character. It does. But sometimes you can build your character another way. Okay? I, I built my character very terribly. And it took me a very minute to get settled. My little brother didn't build his character as bad as me. He's still doing better than me right now. Like, no. It allowed this to be like a moment where you can have a conversation. And then you write out a plan. Well, do you, do you want to move out? Are you trying to get a better job? Are you are you going to school? You didn't mention none of that. Where are you working? Do you like a job? Can you grow your job? Is there going to be a ceiling at your job? Because let me tell you something. Do you a, have insurance? There's a that's a, there's a lot of times when you be having these jobs and you grow, 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 and then you hit a ceiling. And that ceiling is called a degree. My mama hit that. That's why my mama ended up getting her degree while she was like thirty something because she got to a point where she had grew so far in the company. They were like, "Oh, hey, good sis. Well, we can't really. This is cute." But, you know, Bob and Sarah got just as much experience as you. But, you know, he got a master's yeah, and she got a degree. Yeah. That's where that you, experience comes in. And, but they all had the same experience. All of them had the same experience. And then Bob and Sarah had a degree. Yeah, I'm saying they didn't all have the same degree, though. So, my mama didn't have a degree at all. So, then she had to go back to school and then get a degree. So, you need to think about those type of things. What's your career path? What are you trying to do? Where are you trying to be at? You want an associate? You want a bachelor's? Does your job not require a degree? Are you trying to be an engineer? Are you trying to be a doctor? What the fuck are you trying to do? Worried about $180 seems like the bottom, 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 bottom of the list. Cause let me tell you, I just paid one forty two seventeen, and I'm still trying to figure out how much lights am I using. FYI, but you know, bottom line is, good sis, you're trash. <laughs> this, this sound like trash, and you kind of sound like a the fuck boy, fuck boy. And that's all I got on that. So, y'all have a good week. Be blessed. Be blessed, be pay, be happy, be faithful. You can find me, Natoya Ebony, on all... Is it Natoya? It is Natoya Ebony on all social media. You can find Recovering Party Girls on Instagram, Party Girls Pod, on Twitter. You can write your letters to Recovering Party Girls Letters at Gmail. Um, or y'all can DM us, DM us like you have been. Shout out to everybody that does DM us. Um, everybody in the comments and who here for the cackles. I love y'all. Toodaloo, folks. <laughs>